Which USC do we get this week? Mark Rogers, TV, the voice of college football, talking up the game we love with the best bloggers, broadcasters, and writers in the nation each and every day, plus analysis from myself. We have gotten used to and been spoiled by the analysis of uh, Pete Gerson from Fox Sports talking USC football. Pete, how are you doing tonight? We're doing well, Mark. I appreciate you staying up late and having me on here. Absolutely. Got to get this one in. USC goes to Washington. I think we all remember the last time uh, USC took a trip to the great Northwest to take on the Huskies. Uh, Washington was on its way to a college football playoff appearance, the last one for the Pac-12. But USC put a hurt on them by two scores in Seattle, which for me really cemented the best team, a moniker for that USC team as they went to the Rose Bowl. I thought they were the best team in the Pac-12. And here we are three years later, they're making a return trip up there. Yeah, well, the key thing about that matchup, as you mentioned, Mark, when USC went to Seattle and, and beat them, Sam Darnold was the guy behind center calling the signals and throwing some dimes. So a little bit of a different Look, this weekend, of course, we don't even know really who's going to be the quarterback yet. It could be Keaton Slovis. He's still in concussion protocol, though. Didn't practice the last two days. So it's looking like it's going to be Matt Fink making his first career start. And I'm sure you and a lot of the nation was watching that Friday night game last week, Mark, with you know Reggie Bush on the sideline and Matt Leinart. Matt Fink comes in after Keaton Slovis goes down on the first series of the game. Gets absolutely laid out by uh, Loki Futu, that huge – defensive lineman for the Utes and gets concussed. And then Matt Fink comes in and out of nowhere throws for 350 yards, three touchdowns and leads the Trojans to a win. And it's a great story because Fink actually entered the transfer portal last April and was thinking about, he's already graduated from school. He's had another year of eligibility and was thinking about trying to be the starting quarterback somewhere else, but he loved USC. He loved his teammates. He liked Clay Helton, which most players will tell you that they love Clay Helton, regardless of what the media and the fans think. The players love playing for him. And he stuck it out at SC, and you never know what's going to happen. Two quarterbacks go down. You're on your third string. And Matt Fink came through with that big win for the Trojans to put them in prime position in the Pac-12 South. I thought it was uh, one of the best games of the weekend. It was fascinating. It was just uh, fun to watch. And even though, as we surveyed both sides of the football for both teams. I couldn't find an advantage for USC aside from wide receiver and against maybe the best uh, defensive backfield in the Pac-12. So it wasn't a huge advantage on paper, but as it played out, and I, I often say this, for as fun as it is to watch great wide receiver play, it's the most dependent position on the field. Yep. They don't get the ball thrown to them, which if the quarterback doesn't get protection, so they're dependent upon two units to yeah. get the ball. So they may not see the football and they're completely taken out of a game. But I cannot think of a game in recent times where a wide receiver trio won that football game. Sure, there were other reasons why USC won the game, but they just made play after play after play against, again, one of the best uh, backfields in the Pac-12. Yeah, you're totally right. And that's a good point because – the receivers kind of did had to bail out Matt Fink. And I was talking to Yogi Roth, who uh, check out the Yogi Roth show because I produced that podcast on Apple iTunes, Yogi Roth show and the Ted and Yogi Pac-12 Adventure weekly podcast. Yogi knows the Pac-12 better than pretty much anyone. And he, although he loves the story, he loves Matt Fink. Yogi used to coach under Pete Carroll back in the, in the heydays. He actually coached in the 2005 Rose Bowl. But Yogi made a good point. He says, is this type of football sustainable? Are you allowed to just throw the ball around? He calls it backyard football because it's literally just chuck it up and have a 6'4 Michael Pittman go and high point a ball and come down with it for a 77-yard touchdown. So we'll see if he'll be able to do that against another really good defense in Washington. But when you look at like the time of possession in the game against Utah, USC just had these quick scoring drives where they'd have four or five plays and, and get a home run play, a home run pass to a guy like Pittman or Tyler Vaughn's. But we'll see if the Washington defense is going to allow the Trojans to do that because the Trojans, as we all know, Mark, we saw it at BYU. They're a different team on the road outside of the friendly confines of the Coliseum. They're not the same team. And, and now they're going to have an inexperienced quarterback, regardless of who it is. Keaton Slovis, yes, he's good. Yes, he's talented. But, you know, that first big Pac-12 road game, he just hasn't been there. He hasn't had the experience, regardless of his arm talent and his maturity. He hasn't done it. And of course, neither has Matt Fink. If Fink starts, it'll be his first career start. So although these guys have talent, they're smart guys, they just haven't had the reps. It's like, you know, it's like playing any other sport. Your first time out there, you may have all the natural talent in the world, but if you haven't done a two-minute drive to lead a team on the road, 
then you can't expect them to have that much experience and, and execute. So it's going to be really interesting against a Washington team who definitely needs a win after losing that game against Berkeley late into the night a few weeks ago. It's, it's a must win for both teams. It's going to be really fun on Saturday. So just to confirm, Pete, if anything happens to Matt Fink, Keaton Slovis is ready to go because last week we were sawing sh- we, we we saw shots on the sideline of number twenty seven, the safety. I forget his name. He was warming up throwing passes, and I was thinking, boy, this could really get ugly. Yeah. So if if, if I mean if Keaton Slovis doesn't start, it's going to because he's it's going to be because he's in concussion protocol, and they're likely not going to push it. An eighteen year old quarterback, they're they're likely not going to want to start him, even if he has slight concussion symptoms. So. If it's going to be Fink, let's say, starting, and then if he gets hurt, God God forbid, knock on wood, I mean, that, that, that'd be as unlikely as ever to have your three quarterbacks go down. But you're right. It's a safety. Brandon Purdue, he was a walk-on, and he played two games of quarterback in high school. So that's your fourth string. And then your fifth string, just in case, is Tyler Vaughns, the star wide receiver who we just talked about, who had a great game last week. He played, I don't think he even actually played any quarterback in high school. I think he could just throw a good spiral better than some other guys. But he actually worked out at practice yesterday, and he was throwing the ball to some guys. He actually, I think he threw a, a pass last year for a touchdown on like a little trickery play. But yeah, you're really going down the depth chart here. And so it's got to be Fink, hopefully, staying healthy. And if Slovis can go, he'll go. But I'm guessing I put my money on Fink starting this weekend. Reminds me of a game in the mid-80s in the NFL where the Bears were down to their four-string quarterback, who was Walter Payton who threw like three passes that game and basically just ran the Wildcat before there was a Wildcat uh, out of the shotgun formation. USC 51-29, the all-time series over Washington. Obviously, these are the two, what I would consider, maybe not the two best teams right this second, but they're the two best programs historically and then more recently for Washington in the Pac-12 should be a good one as the Huskies are a 10-point favorite. The other player that stood out to me, well, you had... Uh, the the safety, Hufanga was yeah, Hufanga, yeah. Hufanga was exceptional in that game. He was all over the place, and Drake Jackson was a force. Yeah, well, I said it last week. I said, keep your eye on Drake Jackson. What does he do? He goes in and gets Tyler Huntley on a safety in a critical part of the game, and that that guy's already in running for freshman of the year mark for the Pac-12 at least because he's so. We talked about last week. Clancy Prendergast, the defensive coordinator, said it about him. He's just so much more mature and all the skill he has and all the, all the technical aspects of the game. He's so far ahead of a normal freshman. Of course he has a physical part, but that's what a lot of freshmen come in. They come in at six, three, two seventy, and you're know, strong as a bull, but Drake Jackson just knows how to get around guys. He overpowers guys. He can stop the run game. He can get a safety on the quarterback. So he's going to be key. And Talano Hufanga, you mentioned a sophomore. So another young guy on this Trojan defense, He had 14 tackles last week. He has 42 on the year in four games. He's averaging over 10 tackles a game, but he's in concussion protocol. I just heard yesterday. He didn't really know it because he played the whole game on Friday, but he's in concussion protocol and also got a little uh, stinger on his shoulder, kind of a a tweaked shoulder. So he didn't practice yesterday. We'll see. uh, Clay Helton said they're going to try. He'll he'll be a game time decision. Probably they're going to try to play him obviously because he's a big part of that defense, but he's a key guy. And then Elijah Griffin, uh, OG, they call him, cornerback, uh, was playing pretty well. He's another sophomore, but he had to leave the Utah game with a back injury, and he's improving. So he looks like a better chance uh, to play, but Talano is a gamer. He's, he's from Oregon. He's from the Pacific North, Northwest, so he's going to want to try to play in this game. But uh, if the Trojans don't have him at safety, it, it's, it's going to be a big loss for them. Yeah, Griffin showed up with some nice plays and left at some point, late third quarter, something in that range. But Hufanga, my goodness, this kid is a uh, emerging star. He was yeah. all over the place making some crazy hits, pass breakups on the ball. And, of course, he was the kid that made uh, the interception that saved the Fresno State game uh, yeah. there in the end zone where he just played center field, broke on the football like few people can to make that play. Uh, they're going to face Jacob Eason uh, off to a nice start at 73% of passing, 10 touchdowns and two picks. Five-star yeah. recruit originally signed by Georgia, uh, obviously has taken over for Jake Browning. Uh, 24 for 28 against a BYU team that uh, obviously the Trojans are very familiar with. Yeah, yeah, and you're right. And that, that's that got to be taken into consideration because the Trojans couldn't do much against BYU. Oh, they could do much, but they couldn't seal the game and, and really 
play to their full ability. Like I said, they're a different team on the road. They went to Provo and then they weren't nearly as good as they were at the Coliseum the last two games against Pac-12 opponents. And then Washington went back last week and, and kind of just owned BYU. They took them down 42-17. Uh, Eason had a great game. You mentioned the 10 touchdowns and two interceptions. He's got a 79 QBR on the year, which is 15th in the nation. He's a good player. He would have been the starter at Georgia, but Jake Fromm came along once Eason got hurt, took over the job, and, and never let it go. So he's going to be probably the best quarterback that USC's faced all season, I'd say. Tyler Huntley last week we thought was progressing into a more of a pocket passer. He had a solid game. Still threw for over, I think, 240 yards, but he wasn't you know, a dominant force. He didn't control the game. Eason has that potential. Eason's not as mobile as some of the quarterbacks the Trojans have faced and definitely not as mobile as a guy like Dorian Thompson-Robinson or Khalil Tate, who the Trojans will face down the road. But Eason's a true pocket passer. You mentioned the 10 touchdowns against two picks, so he's got some good accuracy, thrown for over 1,000 yards this year. And he's going to be a guy the Trojans are going to have to look at and really try to contain in the passing game because they've got a great wide receiver duo as well. Uh, they've got Aaron Fuller and Ty Jones, and then they like to use their tight end a lot, Hunter Bryant, who's going to kind of draw the matchup of Isaiah Palomao or Talano Hufanga if he can, if he can play and stay healthy. Yeah, Salvin Ahmed is a player on a regular basis that would spell Miles Gaskin during his 1,300-yard seasons for Washington. He was banged up, did not play against BYU. He's still um, questionable, but they turned to Richard Newton last week. He scored uh, five touchdowns on the season at 5.4 yards per carry. Uh, what is really going to be, for me, the key in this game is this air raid attack for USC that couldn't mount anything in their ground uh, in terms of the rush offense against um, Utah, facing a very similar style defense, very uh, and from a quality standpoint, similar defense. And Washington, as year after year after year, taking care of Mike Leach's air raid, 5 0 against him. And now they face USC, forming a similar type approach. Yeah, that, that's you hit the nail on the head right there, Mark, because I had that written down in my notes too. Mike Leach hasn't beaten the Washington with his air raid offense. So obviously this Husky defense knows how to play a bit against the air raid. I don't know if it's the exact same offense when you have Matt Fink in there. Um, he's a little more mobile than a Slovis and a JT Daniels. It's still, of course, the air raid because it's Graham Harrell calling the plays for the Trojans and he wants to run that air raid where it's a very limited playbook. It's like a sub-18 play playbook. So it's just very simple. The wide receivers go out, run their routes, try to find some open grass, and we'll see how different it is with Matt Fink if he gets the starting nod and if they kind of cater the playbook to his talents and his needs. But you're right. The UW defense is for real. Um, they, they haven't had nearly as many tough opponents on their schedule yet. That Cal team's pretty good, though. The last undefeated team in the pack, we got to give credit to the Bears. 4-0, just went down to the SEC and beat Ole Miss on the road beat UW on the road. So they're, that's actually going to be a good game when SC faces them in November. But this UW defense is definitely definitely a strength. I'd say, I mean, last week we were going into the Utah game saying Utah was going to be the best defense in the pack, which I still think they're up there. They just didn't quite play a great game, and they got beat on those 50-50 balls to Michael Pittman and stuff that led to big-time touchdowns. But if you took away those big USC touchdowns, really – it almost looked like Utah dominated the game with time of possession, with total plays run, yardage, and that USC defense was getting tired there in the fourth quarter. So we'll see what USC team comes out because I've talked about it before. I'll say it again. This team hasn't been consistent over the last couple of years, and we'll see if they, if they play like they did against Stanford and Utah or they'll turn into a performance like they did against BYU on the road. We enjoyed the uh, USC football discussion with Pete Gerson. You can join him on Fox Sports. He also uh... – represents uh, USC on blog talk radio. So you can join him right there. Where can uh, people find you, Pete? Yeah. Hit me up on Twitter, uh, P underscore Gearson and, uh, and on Instagram. And then look at Yogi Roth. Cause I do stuff for his Twitter account. And I produce his podcast. So look at Yogi Roth on Twitter, the Yogi Roth show, uh, Yogi Roth on Facebook. Cause he's got some awesome content surrounded around the PAC 12. He's a PAC 12 networks color analyst and broadcaster, but he's more than that. He's a podcaster. He's a, book writer. He wrote a great book with Pete Carroll and uh, he's just got some awesome stuff. So check out yogiroth.com or Yogi Roth on Twitter as well. Okay, Pete, we always enjoy the uh, USC breakdown right here and uh, enjoy your weekend. And I know you'll be working hard covering college football for Fox. Yeah, I'm sure you'll be working hard too, covering it for ESPN and enjoying some games this weekend. Should be a fun one.